I have broken Usain Bolt's 100 meter record, but I can't show you my face. I am a proud, enhanced athlete. There's a few exciting unveilments that have come out in the last few weeks in the world of tech. Is that a word? Unveilments? I don't know. Unveileries? We'll let it go. Um, Unveilement, I think, is the, the correct word. All of them will have some impact on the world of online coaching. Well, two of them will. <laughs> One of them will be more just entertainment. First one, and I'm gutted about this. I was going to show you the video of this, Johnny, because you hadn't actually seen the trailer, and it's been taken down. But I'll I'll recreate it for you. Would that be Would that be nice? With the same like cinematic quality. Yeah, I'll I'll do my best. Okay. So, picture the scene. It's a guy on an Olympic track, and he's on his marks. He's setting down. You can't see his face, and the camera's just focusing on his his bulging hamstrings. And there's a voiceover that's, I am the fastest 100 meter runner that you've ever seen. I've beaten Usain Bolt's time by 0.8 seconds, but nobody knows my face and nobody knows my name. This is the Enhanced Olympics. I have been shunned by the sporting community <laughs> because of my drug use, but I am pushing the limits of human performance but nobody knows who I am. My identity is secret. And it's just that kind of thing rotating through mm. like an archer and a runner and all this stuff. And it's basically somebody who has taken it on themselves to run the enhanced games in 2024. That's so, so exciting, isn't it? Isn't it? He has been vilified. He will be vindicated. Come watch him compete at the 2024 enhanced games. The world isn't ready for him. The Olympics hate him. He's the fastest man in the world. So this is a guy that actually exists. Oh. You found the video, haven't you? <laughs> you just found the video. After my cinematic render, I mean, mine's better anyway, but for the sake I think of I've got completeness. I am the fastest man in the world. But you've never heard of me. I have broken Usain Bolt's 100 meter record, but I can't show you my face. I am a proud, enhanced athlete. The Olympics hate me. I need your help to come out. I need your help to stop hate. I need your help for the world to embrace science. Come join me in 2024 at the first enhanced games and see me break the world record in public. Like I've got the measure of it. I think I know, I know what's what's happening. <laughs> so, is this a? This isn't like a sanctioned thing by the whatever the sanctioning body would be, the Olympic Committee. I assume. Well, someone's just set up their own sanctioning body and just said, "Do what you want." Because <laughs> the, the problem, I suppose, the problem with with anything like this is that, like, so I, you've seen the same happen in in powerlifting and in CrossFit as they've become more popular, the standard has just gone crazy. So like, especially in CrossFit, as as people were making like serious money um, at the top of the sport, it attracted a much higher standard of, of everything. With something like this, unless it's either like an actual Olympic gold medal or there's mega prize money, there's gonna be loads of people taking loads of drugs with really high levels of performance who just think oh, I can't be bothered. Loads of work, loads of prep. Do you see what I mean? That what people who are taking drugs are going to be like, not going to bother. Well, so like I think the reason a lot of the re the reason why people like enter these big competitions is either the prestige. So there's a lot of uh, history and heritage around winning that thing, or there's a lot of money on the line, or maybe both. So this bit with this being new. I think the first round of it, either like if it's still running in five years time and someone's sponsoring it and there's a bunch of prize money, then I think we'll see some really, truly mental things 
in it. So the, the way I see this is like, historically, let's say running, because that's the example they used in the trailer. Mm -hmm. 1910, before steroids are a thing, I, I assume, you've got people running as fast as they can. Someone goes like, oh, I'm going to wear shoes when I'm running. And people go, yeah, okay, that's all right. And then like things go along and then eventually like steroids are invented and we find that they improve your performance. And someone decides along that journey to go, oh, you can wear shoes and you can run on a nice track and whatever, but, and you can drink as much water as you want, but no, you can't, can't use that thing. Mm. And then they created the split. And then over time you've got like steroidy runners and normal runners. The opposite happened with strongman. Nobody watches natural strongman because it's boring. Is it even a thing? Does it exist? Well, there we go. It's <laughs> because the same split happened and somewhere along the way, someone was like, oh, this drug really helps to, to lift the big rock and put it on the thing and pull the car with your, with your knob or um, drag the ship with your ears or whatever. <laughs> that's, the, that's a strong man event, isn't it? Um, well, that's the slogan. <laughs> on, on New Year's Day, when it's like, welcome to SBD's World's Strongest Man, that's just beneath that is pull a car with your knob, pull a ship with your ears. <laughs> <laughs> and all of that is only possible because of steroids. And so they're just like, yeah, let's go for it. it. It's interesting though, isn't it? The, like the expectations gap that exists. Cause I don't know whether you have this, but, but pretty much every single year around Christmas time, when they put all the strongest man stuff on TV, someone will say, Oh, Johnny, what can you do on that? And I'm like, nowhere close like not even in the same, when there's a guy like doing eight reps with a 360 kilo deadlift on an axle from an une uneven surface. Like a bleeding out his bar nerve. and he's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, what, how, how strong are you compared to that? Not even in the same like conversation as that. And they're like, well, what's he doing that you're not? I'm like probably quite a lot of things. Pro pro probably <laughs> if like, if we, if we looked at a blood panel of me and him, it would probably look quite different. I'm sure he feels on a daily basis, probably pretty good. <laughs> maybe quite out of breath and a bit a bit hot but like yeah maybe his life expectancy is a quite a few years shorter but for now he feels good so he feels pretty good yeah but it, my point is it's interesting that that's just been normalized so like that's a an enhanced event and it's on tv it's on tv at like totally family family watching times and it doesn't say anywhere like by the way some of these guys are on a shitload of testosterone <laughs> it's just it's just wow look how strong they are so to your point why is it that we have to watch this sort of like neutered version of other sports weird isn't it it's just slipped by and like the same with with bodybuilding like yeah there's a little bit more of an awareness of natural bodybuilding but it's still nowhere like no one knows who the the top natural bodybuilders are in the world like in the general population but everyone knows who ronnie coleman or kai green or yeah. um, all these people are so it's good point. And the problem with bodybuilding is it's almost become a sport of like, how many drugs can you fit in your body before mm. something breaks? I, well, it's the same thing with powerlifting, I suppose, isn't it? Like if you think of go into a gym and ask someone like name a powerlifter, they might mention like Ed Cohen, for example, who probably wasn't natural during his, during the time he was, he was competing. A lot of the guys who are like just lifting the crazy, crazy numbers. Jim, and even like the Jim Wenders, the Dave Tates, they're all just using as much stuff as they possibly can from a drugs perspective and an equipment perspective to move the most weight possible. But in, in running, for example, it's like, well, you can, you, ha you can run from this point to this point, but you must follow these like really strict rules that just prevent you from running. Like, like let's, let's see like an eight second hundred meters. That'd be fun to watch, wouldn't it? Well, this is it. It would be fun to watch. And I, I think that alone is what's going to cause this to to get some real traction unless like there's some kind of equally powerful like moral uh movement that says no no we can't do that because whatever and you know obviously health health effects and it becomes a bit of a circus but we've seen in other sports where drugs are allowed that it's infinitely more entertaining so it's probably going to go down that route well it's also assuming that the current olympics is no drug use so maybe it might not be that different. I think that would be the mm -hmm. most interesting, wouldn't it? If it's a like total it, free for all, what happens? Mm -hmm. It's the it's the Tom Martin comparison, isn't it? 
where Tom Martin, for those people who don't know, was competing in a tested powerlifting federation and was often accused of taking drugs and was had the British deadlift record and was really and was winning, consistently winning. Well, he, he beat you in, uh, in Dover. Massively, yeah. I think he <laughs> opened with more than my third attempt on deadlift. So... <laughs> While eating, he held, croissant. while eating a croissant, held the British record in deadlift for years, very, very long time. And everyone was like, I think we think, and everyone's hypothesizing that he's on water-based drugs and very low levels and he's tapering down. And so then he was like, right. Well, I don't think he made the decision for this reason, but he decided to move federations. Now he looks like, I mean, he just looks like a, like an android, to be honest. Like he, he doesn't look human. He's, he's so lean and muscular. He's a hundred kilos or so. And as his deadlift went from like 350 to like 420. You're like, okay, he was probably natural initially. And so like, really, we, we should be seeing the same. If we don't see the same thing happen, then everyone in the Olympics has rumbled. <laughs> That's a great perspective. <laughs> so yeah, if we don't see a big jump, then something's gone awry with the drug testing in the Olympics.